What's going on sauce makers? My name is Mark and welcome to Sauce Stash. Today, we're gonna be making kimchi. So kimchi is a spicy pickled cabbage. It's commonly found in Korea, and in fact, it's actually the national side dish of Korea. It's made by fermenting vegetables, spices, and cabbage together. So to get started, we're gonna clean all of our vegetables, but let me run down the list of what we got. Now there is thousands of varieties of kimchi. There's traditional kimchi and untraditional kimchi. Today, we're making the sauce stash kimchi. Every one of them varies a little bit. This is just my version. So we have three large heads of Napa cabbage. This is about eight pounds. One cup of kosher salt. You don't wanna use iodized salt. You have to use kosher salt to help with the fermentation process. We have three tablespoons of sweet rice flour or sweet glutinous flour. Three tablespoons of sugar. Two and a half tablespoons of garlic paste. Three quarters cup of fish sauce. A bunch of chives. One and a half cups to two cups of Korean red pepper flakes, one daikon radish, and we also have one sprig of yellow spring onion. Oh, and I also forgot about two tablespoons or one chunk, a little bit bigger than your thumb, of ginger. Okay, so the first step before we clean them and salt them is what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop these into four sections. But we're just going to chop straight down the middle at the butt end and then tear apart really gently, so hopefully it stays together. Might lose some of the outside. Just lost a little bit, that's okay. I'm gonna do that across all of them here. And tear. This is a good looking piece of cabbage. And we're gonna go straight down the middle again, and then same thing, tear down the middle, and you end up with four quarters from each Napa cabbage. So now let's move these over to a container, take them to be rinsed in cold water, and we'll be right back. Now, when you wash these, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you run cold water down in between each individual leaf. And then I'm going to put these in a separate container, colander here on the other side, until we're all done. Okay, so now that we have our cabbage rinsed in some cold water, what we're going to do is we're going to salt it now, and we're gonna salt each leaf. This is going to start the process of removing a lot of the water, removing a lot of the moisture from these leaves and turning it more into the kimchi texture that you know. So we have our cup of kosher salt. Now again, you don't want to use an iodized salt, you want to use a kosher salt. First off, what you want to do is you're going to salt the outside of the leaf now remember, you have a lot to do, so don't go crazy on this, but then salt the inside of the leaf as well. Now you don't have to salt both sides of the inside and outside, just go leaf to leaf on the inside once you get it started. So we have the cabbage salted. So what we're going to do, this is going to sit for two hours. We're gonna let this sit for 45 minutes at first, and then every 15 minutes, we're gonna turn the cabbage over. So everything on the top is gonna to go to the bottom, and then every 15 minutes cycle through that for the next two hours, two and a half hours. Uh, you should be able to bend, not snap your cabbage, and it will be ready about that point. I'll show you once we get there. And then our next step is we're just gonna get all of our vegetables prepped. So we got the daikon cleaned and skinned, and we're just going to do these in matchsticks. Got some thicker ones there at the end. <laughs> so we're just gonna add all of our veggies to a large bowl, because that's what we're gonna be using to mix the paste in later once we get that complete. So we got our spring onion. Let's get that chopped up. Now when you get down to the lighter part of the spring onion, we're gonna chop this really fine. We want this to be minced. Step back for a minute. Oh my gosh, that was strong. Add the large part of the spring onion, the green part of the spring onion to your veggie bowl. And then we're gonna use this smaller, finer part in our paste mixture here. Same thing, let's take our chives. We don't want these to be fine. We want these to be, you know, decent chunk of chive. Next up, let's get our ginger going here. Now for the skin, you could use the back of a spoon or you could use the edge of your knife. So the cool thing, once you're all done, save your ginger peel, you can make yourself some ginger tea. So we are going to chop this into small blocks and use a garlic press. We want this to be fine to kind of mix into the paste. 
So go ahead and add your garlic paste to your ginger and onion and just kind of get that mixed around. And now add our fish sauce to the ginger, garlic, and onion mixture. Get that stirred in, and then we're gonna start on the main part of the paste. Oh, that's actually smelling really good. Love this spoon still, by the way. Look at that, how awesome is that? Oh my gosh. So for the paste, we need to get about three cups of water, and we're gonna boil the water and add in our flour. So let's get that going. And we're also going to add in the boiling process three seaweed nori sheets. Now this is just gonna give just a little bit extra of that sea flavor. It is also time to turn these over. Now as you can see, there is a ton of water and this is starting to get very soft, which is exactly what we want. We wanna be able to bend this back without it snapping. So now every 15 minutes, we're gonna turn these over. So. Since kimchi is fermented, it contains healthy bacteria. That bacteria is known to do a lot of things, possibly. It can help with weight loss, it helps with lower cholesterol levels. They even say that it helps prevent stomach cancers. Wild! Now, because of the natural antioxidants, kimchi is also known to slow down the aging process, giving you a more radiant, shiny, healthy skin and hair. Okay, so now that this is boiling, we're gonna remove our seaweed. Whoop, just get that out of there. And add in glutinous rice flour. Now we're just gonna do this slowly while we're mixing. We don't want it to clump up and form a dough. So once we get this back to a boil, we're gonna add our sugar, and this should only take a minute to start boiling. Here we go. And again, that was three tablespoons of the flour with three tablespoons of sugar. So this is pretty thick pretty soupy, and it has a nice little shine to it. We're gonna let this come right back to a boil one more time, and then immediately remove it from the heat. Let this cool down for 15 minutes. We're gonna turn these guys one more time. You can see the crazy amounts of water that's in here, and all these leaves are starting to get really loose. This is all real bendy. 15 minutes to cool down, 15 minutes more before we turn these over one more time. Okay, so it's been a little over two hours. The kimchi paste is ready to go. The kimchi cabbage is ready to go. You can see this bends really nicely. It's not gonna snap. This is just beautifully done. So what we need to do is we need to wash all of this salt water off of the cabbage before we proceed to the next step. So let's go ahead and get that going. We're gonna wash this two or three times. Wash, rinse, wash, rinse. And then we're gonna put it in a colander to let drip dry as much as we can for about another 20 to 30 minutes. So let's get that moving. Okay, so we're going to use a colander in the sink, cold water, get that cold, and we're just gonna dump out all of this salt water here. There we go. And I'm just gonna use this container right here, this is gonna work perfect, to rinse off as much of the salt water as possible, flip the leaves open, we wanna get out all of that salt. And then we're gonna dump that in a colander to drip dry. Okay, so now that we ran that through a cleaning process once, we're gonna do that same process two more times. After that's done, let this dry, and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we're waiting for the cabbage to dry up, we're gonna take our paste that we started and add in our flour-sugar mixture. This is kind of what makes it sticky and makes, uh, makes it stick to the cabbage and helps along with the fermentation. Oh, it smells so good, it's so garlicky. Now, the red pepper powder, you can put in as much as you want. I'm adding about a cup and a half. You could do two cups, three cups, you could do a cup. Just depends on how spicy you want it. The red pepper powder is a big part of the flavor of kimchi, so you don't want to skimp too much. Look at that. That's like perfectly red. It smells delicious. Oh, give it a taste. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's gonna be great. So now at this point, we can add in our veggies. So now we got, like I said, our daikon, our, green, our yellow spring onion, and our chives. We're gonna just jump those right in there, mix them in. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so we have our cabbage. It's all dry, ready to go. Uh, we have three mason jars that have been heat treated. I do recommend when you're doing this to use gloves. I'm not going to, just cause. And then the last thing that you're gonna do is we're gonna cut the butt ends off of every single one of these pieces here. And what we're going to do is take each 
strand of cabbage and just run it through the kimchi paste. And we're gonna wanna make sure it's completely coated. And then once it's coated, we're going to drop it in a mason jar and then fill your jars. I don't know if this spoon will fit in there. Yeah, it does perfectly. We're gonna wanna push the cabbage down to the bottom just to make sure that there is no air. And you'll actually hear air kind of push up through. And I can already tell this is gonna be amazing. It looks and smells amazing. I am so stoked about this. Okay, so for the last step of this process, now that we got it pretty much jarred up, I'm gonna cover each one of these jars with a sheet of cellophane. And all we're going to do is just give it one little poke. That will allow any gas to escape that needs to escape and keep it covered so nothing gets in. So we got these guys all wrapped up. You're gonna start smelling a little slight sour smell. And we're also gonna put these on top of a board because if any of these gases start to erupt, they might spew out some of the juices that are left here. So we don't want that all over the place. So we're gonna get this table cleaned up, let these guys sit for a few days, and then we'll be back. And that's it, kimchi. I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I cannot wait. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. Look at this, look at this stuff. Okay, so we're gonna open up one jar right now. These were in the closet in a dark, warm place for about the last two days or so, of more than 48 hours. And then just in the, the last few hours, they were in the refrigerator to cool down. So I'm gonna open up one of these jars. Now, there's a bunch, I don't know, you could see that there was a bunch of leakage. So I also wanted to show and point out that you know this is fermenting because you can see bubbles forming all through the glass. And another way that you could tell that this is really working is you could see there's bubbles on the top when you press down. Now that's a lot of the gas escaping. Now that is all beautiful fermentation. I'm gonna plate some of this up right now. I cannot wait for this stuff. This is gonna be so good and so worth the wait. Look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. Okay, I am excited. This is homemade kimchi. This is how you do it. Really simple recipe, really easy. This stuff's gonna be just incredible. Mmm, mmm, it's perfect. Mmm, oh my god. It's still a little salty, I'm okay with it, but tons and tons of flavor. I mean, it's just, ah, oh, how beautiful is that? How beautiful is that kimchi? This is the perfect Korean side dish. You wanna make some rice, put this on top of rice, some bibimbap. You can jar this up and store it in your refrigerator. It'll continue fermenting and last a long time. That's it. Kimchi, kimchi. I cleaned that plate. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you click that like button. And if you're new here, click the subscribe button and click the little bell so that way you get notified every time I upload a new video. You can find all the products I use on my Amazon store at amazon.com slash shop slash sauce stash. And if you do make this, I would love if you sent me a picture. I am sauce stash on all social media and I'm the Sauce Stash Guy on Instagram. So I hope you guys come back for more. I live stream every Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Talk about food, talk about what's new this week. There's always a bunch of other YouTube channels that are joining us, so come join in on the chat. And I release foodie videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So thanks for watching. I will see you later, Sauce Makers.